I named Vojo, the Guagua Kwe Indigenicas, Shawanaga and Dinji, Toronto and Dinjaba, Ojibwe, Bayesian and Panamanian and Dao. Hello, my name is Destiny Ray, and I just introduced myself in my language. I said my spirit name is Autumn Woman. I'm from Shawanaga First Nations, but I currently live in Toronto, which is within the treaty and territory lands of the Mississaugas of the Credit. I also said that I'm biracial, being that I'm Ojibwe, Bayesian and Panamanian, but I like to call myself Afro Nish. And today I'm going to be teaching you how to make monomen, which is wild rice and Anishinaabe moen. Now this is the only grain that is indigenous to North America, and it used to be as plentiful as grass. You could find it everywhere within the Great Lakes, and it's long been known to our people as the food that grows on water. And today I'm going to be teaching you how to cook it, and I'm also going to teach you a really easy recipe on how you can eat it. So let's get started. Fun fact, did you know that wild rice is actually a seed and it's very time consuming to harvest? But we'll talk more about that later on. Let's get into the ingredients. So first you're going to need some wild rice, of course. You're going to need some maple syrup, some Dijon or honey mustard. I'm using Dijon. Use whatever you like. Some extra virgin olive oil, an orange, some spring onions, some pink Himalayan salt, some dried cranberries, and some mint. So then I'm going to take my half cup of rice and I'm going to put that into a large bowl so that I can wash it thoroughly. So I like to wash my rice in cold water and I really like to squeeze the grains in between my hand. You'll see how cloudy the water gets, that's why I like to wash it at least three times. By the third time you'll see the water is super clear and then from there I'm just going to drain off the water. If you have a strainer you can use that. I just used my hand. Now some people like to soak their rice overnight. I'm not really a fan. I find that it makes the grains a little bit too soggy. So right after washing it, I'm just going to bring it straight to the pot. Then I'm going to add two cups of water. I'm going to put the lid on it and turn it up to high because we want this to come to a boil. Once it's started to boil, I'm going to turn the temperature down to low and then I'm going to set the timer for 40 minutes. I'll then get started on the other ingredients. I find with the mint leaves it's much easier to stack them, roll them, and then cut them into little ribbons. With the green onion, I'm just chopping them fairly small. I don't know if you like raw onions, but they're going to be raw, so at your own discretion, cut them as big as you like. Then I'll set them to the side. I'm going to zest the orange and squeeze half of the juice into a container I can mix in. Do about four tablespoons of olive oil, a squeeze of the mustard, and about half a teaspoon of the maple syrup. So you'll know your rice is cooked when most of the grains have puffed up. All of them don't need to be, but from there we're just going to drain off the water. Then I added it to a bowl and got ready to add my other ingredients. First I added the green onions and the mint. About four tablespoons of cranberries. went ahead and added my salad dressing and then I'm just going to mix it up. And I gave it a taste and for me it needed a little bit of salt and pepper and that's the thing with this recipe is that it's such a simple recipe and you can really cater it to your own taste buds so taste as you go along and feel free to add more or less of the ingredients to your liking. Once you've added the salt and pepper, you're pretty much done. It's a super easy recipe, wild rice, dried cranberries, mint, super delicious and very fresh. So that's it. Super easy, right? I know. Like I was saying earlier, this is actually a seed and traditionally it's harvested in canoes. The cool thing about it is that as those stalks are knocked into the canoe, some of those seeds would then fall back into the water, thus more stocks would grow. And the animals in the ecosystem would get a nice little meal too. This nutrient-dense grain is so culturally important to us. We use it in ceremony. I hope you give this recipe a try and use it in your home. Until then, bamampi, be well.